Hey, welcome back to Pauline's Pop Culture Corner. As you can see, it looks a little bit different. I've been trying to play with some backgrounds and see which background I like the most. So bear with me while I kind of figure things out. So today we're going to be talking about the fashions of the decade I was born in, the 1970s. Buckle up for a crazy ride of polyester, corduroy, leisure suits, and of course, bell bottoms. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and like the video, subscribe, ring that bell, comment and share. It really helps me out. So we're going to start with the early 1970s and fashion at this time for women really kind of had a little bit of a holdover from the 1960s, the hippie style with the tie dye and bell bottoms, a little bit of the hip huggers still, because as we all know that just because the ball drops on New Year's Eve, it doesn't mean that everything changes overnight, especially with fashion. There's a lot of bleed over from one decade to another. Um, you know, from, you see it from the 60s to the 70s, 70s to the 80s, 80s to the 90s, and so on. A really great feminine style that was in at the time that I have actually personally really love and um, would wear today again is the peasant blouse, the embroidered peasant blouse. It was a really easy feminine style. It could be worn with jeans and kind of, you know, in a casual way, but to dress up the jeans, it could be worn with a skirt, things like that. And I'll admit when they came back briefly in the early 2000s, I bought a couple and I, I would love for them to come back in style. Like I said, they're just a really nice feminine, easy piece to wear. And, um, you know, they, they, depending on the embroidery, they can really dress up an outfit. The next item I want to talk about is just amazing to me that it was ever in style and I kind of want it to come back. And that's the cape. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, the, the black Dracula cape with the big collar or anything like that. I'm talking about the elegant, over the shoulders, you know, clasped with a brooch cape that people would wear. Um, and it could be worn over just about anything. It could be worn over, you know, a sweater and jeans, a dress, a skirt. It could be, you know, used to make a casual dre uh, outfit dressier. It could be used to make a dressy outfit a little bit more every day. Um, and it's a great alternative for crisp or chilly days, especially in the autumn, to, to a coat if you didn't want to wear a coat. Um, I don't see them coming back anytime soon, but I, I'd be on board with it. Now, the only downside is for someone who's a little bit short like me, which yes, shocker, I'm, I'm pretty short. Um, they're not exactly that flattering on us. You kind of do have to have some height to carry it off and, and have it look elegant and effortless. But you know, I, I'd, I'd be on board with seeing other people try it out. And the great thing about the 70s is there really wasn't this fear of patterns. So you could definitely have a cape with a pattern that matched the skirt, you know, like in the picture that I'm going to insert right here. Um, the only thing about this outfit that I don't really like is I don't really like the hat. You know, I wouldn't do that part, but I do like how everything else kind of was tied together. It's a, it's a really great look. Now, one early 70s trend I can't get behind. I, I don't like it. I don't... <laughs> I don't think it looks good on just about anyone, very few people, is gaucho pants. Now these gaucho pants are, they're baggy shorts that look like skirts. So at that point I'm kind of like, well, why don't you just wear a skirt? Um, and they did come back to, the, uh, to fashion in the 80s and we called them culottes. And then for a short time in the, I wanna say early to mid 2000s, they came back and they were more of like a um, stretchy, like legging type material, but still kind of loose and flowy. And I get the idea, I get that it's comfort. Um, you know, you wanna look like maybe like, you know, for, for the 70s version, you wanna look like you're wearing a skirt, but you don't wanna to have to be too worried about, you know, staying ladylike with it. But, gauchos tend to hit unless you're really really like tall you know for for a lady um which i consider to be at least five five to five seven is that's kind of where i start to see that you know um women are tall is if you're not at around that height or taller 
they they hit at a really awkward spot in your leg, like right below the calf, to where if you're not tall, you'll look like you're about three feet tall. And so I know for me, they're they're a no go. I I would never be able to pull them off and you know have them look good on me. Um, if if you like them, awesome, good for you, just not my style. So in the 70s, there were also a variety of different type of um, head coverings. There were headscarves, bandanas, headbands. A lot of times they were made either, you know, of, of fabric or they were kind of handmade using crochet or macrame. In the 70s, there was a pretty big movement of handmade crafts, which I, I'm all for. I love to knit and crochet and, you know, all kinds of things like that. Um, and so there was a, a real push towards, you know, especially macrame. Um, that was really the decade that macrame was popular, you know, for wall hangings, um, plant hangers, things like that. Um, and me personally, I, I don't like my hair in my face at all. Um, so as you've probably seen through the videos um, that I have put up, my hair is either up or there's the pieces are pinned back because I just, I don't like that. So I, I could see myself wearing some of the head coverings or maybe not the head coverings, the head bands, um, the more plain or, you know, less dramatic ones. Um, some of them are a little bit too much for me, you know, like the full head crochet scarf um, that's in the picture that I'm inserting here. But um, I do like the simpler headbands. And I think if you can make it yourself, then you can make it the way you like it. And that's wonderful. I love seeing people wearing handmade, homemade um, items, you know, fashion items. Now men's fashion in the early 1970s was different to what men wear nowadays, but still similar. Um, so they, you know, obviously they still wore jeans, but at the time they were bell bottoms. Um, they had suits, but the suits were made out of fabrics like corduroy and had wide ties and, you know, they wore patterned dress shirts underneath, things like that. There was a big, um, uh, increase in people wearing things like sweater vests and fringe and things like that. Um, lots of patterns. They, again, they, you know, they, they were not afraid of patterns in the seventies. In the mid 1970s for women and men, actually, the fabric of the decade was polyester. So this is a, a synthetic fabric and we still use it today, but we tend to see more poly blends nowadays because it's a lot more comfortable. Um, but in the 70s, you saw a lot of 100% polyester fabric being used. And the reason for that, there's a few reasons. One is that it tends to wrinkle less. Um, you can use it for a variety of different projects. You know, it could be casual, it could be a little bit dressier, more professional. Um, also, it being synthetic meant that fashion was more in reach for the average person. And you could have a closet full of clothes more affordably than you could if you stuck to things like cotton, linen, silk, things like that, um, that were more common previously. At the time, the palette for the decade also started changing. So the color palette started moving towards your, you know, burnt orange, harvest gold, brown, avocado green, now that's not to say that those were the only colors used. Of course not. You know, there was still, of course, the powder, powder blue, like we've seen in many, many prom pictures of tuxedos. Um, there was still, you know, your pinks and your purples and things like that. But we're talking about the prevalent colors and it's just like, you know, how pastels kind of ruled the 80s and then in the 90s, the jewel tones kind of took over. It's the same idea. And it wasn't just fashion, it was everything. I mean, just ask anybody who had a refrigerator back in the 70s what color it was. I know the house that I grew up in with my grandparents, the refrigerator was avocado green and the countertops were burnt orange. Now that was the 80s, but the house had obviously been redone in the 70s, so. There you go. <laughs> Office wear for women at the time started to kind of evolve. It wasn't about, you know, the, the fem ultra feminine frilly dresses or outfits anymore. There was this move towards having more suit like options um, of women being able to wear button up blouses with 
pants or trousers, however you'd like to say it. I know that if you say pants in the UK, that's a little bit more scandalous. Um, and even the dresses were a little bit more structured, a little bit more professional than they had been before um, to show that women were venturing out into the office space a lot more. And this was kind of a way to try to be taken more seriously and look a little bit more professional. For women, casual uh, wear was still, you know, pants with with the flares or the bell bottoms. A lot of times, you know, you saw the double knit, um, which I would guess you would only wear in um, really cool weather because it seems like a kind of a hot, temp you know, kind of a hot and sweaty type of knit. Um, turtlenecks, vests, um, popular in cooler climates as well. But the key to everything were was the accessories. So you had the wide belt, you had uh, neckerchiefs or scarves, head coverings like I talked about before were still really in, in style. Um, and it just kind of tied the whole outfit together. You know, if you could get your accessories on board, um, no matter what you were wearing, it kind of made the outfit. Skirts and dresses were also getting a little bit longer and people were tending to move away from the mini and ultra mini skirts and dresses of the 1960s. Now that's not to say that people didn't wear the shorter items, it's just that there were more options for the longer items, you know, like knee length or midi length um, at that time. Now for men, fashion in general just doesn't tend to evolve as quickly as it does for for women. Um, so a lot of the things in the mid 70s were still holding over from the early 70s, with the exception of the introduction of the leisure suit, which is definitely kind of like the stereotypical outfit that we think of if we think of men's fashion from the 1970s. The leisure suit was kind of touted as a wrinkle-free option um, for a suit that could be great at the office and good for going out on the town, you know, at night, you know, right after work. Um, it kind of became the calling card of the 70s male. Um, it was often paired with a patterned polyester shirt, um, unbuttoned, of course, to show off the chest hair and the medallions, you know. <laughs> it was also often paired with shiny black dress boots or, or I guess brown, but just shiny dress boots. Um, and I think that that was kind of a way for men to be able to be in a professional setting, but still feel like they're expressing themselves and then go ahead and turn it and hit the disco afterwards. At this time, there was also, you know, one piece jumpsuits for men, which other than, you know, people who work in certain jobs nowadays, um, like car mechanics, plumbers, you know, things like that, who wear them as coveralls. So they go over their clothes. I don't really think that we see men ever wearing jumpsuits, like one piece jumpsuits as fashion nowadays. Um, and I, I don't know that I would particularly like that. You know, if my husband came home and he had bought a jumpsuit in corduroy or denim. I don't know what my reaction would be. Probably, I would probably laugh like I just did. Um, and then of course, again, the seventies being the seventies and them not being afraid of pattern, there is the advent of the plaid suit as well. So matching plaid jacket with pants, big wide belt, um, often white, and the wide collared dress shirt underneath, slightly unbuttoned again to show all of this that's going on, you know. Um, think Burt Reynolds back then. Um, and, that, and you've got mid 70s men's fashion. For the late 70s, I'm gonna kind of put men and women together because there was a lot of the same influences working on both groups. And a lot of the influences were coming from the different um, music that was coming out at the time. So you had, you know, glam rock looks, disco looks, um, you had plain old rock and roll, you had punk rock, and the artists included, you know, Debbie Harry from Blondie, um, David Bowie, Rolling Stones, Aerosmith, um, you know, just all of these different influences that were coming in and like I said, influencing both men and women's fashion. Um, at this time, casual wear was pretty much the same and it was kind of similar for both men and women, you know, t-shirt and jeans. Um, whereas, you know, the, maybe the t-shirts the on the women were a little bit more form-fitting, but you know, the, 
the high-waisted, more high-waisted bell-bottom um, jeans were kind of the, the look at the time. And women really at this time began to lean into the looks that put them on more of an even footing professionally at the office because they had a lot more opportunities now to have careers outside of the home, more than they ever had been before. And I think there was really more of a cognizance at the, this time of really trying to maintain that professionalism and show that you're not just there because you're the token lady working in the office, but that you deserve to be there. And so a little bit more structured looks, um, definitely more, um, you know, pantsuits, that kind of thing. And, you know, moving into the eighties, you really see that. So this is just kind of like the beginning of that in that work culture for women. For men, you know, they continued on at this time with the leisure suits um, and the, the suits that were, you know, looked kind of like a regular suit, but still had the flared pants, um, the wide collars, the wide ties, things like that. Um, and then there was a, when I was doing research for this video, I didn't realize what it was called, but there's a suit option that was made popular by James Bond at the time. And it's called the safari suit for, for warmer times of the year. And there's actually an um, option that I'm going to go ahead and insert here and that way you can see what it looks like. It's actually um, a, a suit by Pierre Cardin and it's on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art in New York City um, in, their, in their fashion display. And I, like I said, I, I, I've seen many, many movies that have shown this style of suit. I just didn't realize what the name of it is, but looking at it, you know, I'm looking at it at my small little monitor here and I'm gonna, obviously the, the picture has been inserted. Um, it does kind of look like a safari outfit. Like you would be really at home wearing that and a pith helmet and you know, all that stuff. So fashion was interesting in the seventies. Um, now here's the thing. I'm not really into fashion at least not for myself. Um, I don't really follow trends. I try to pick things that are comfortable, that hopefully flatter me, um, that are easy. You know, if something needs to be dry cleaned or ironed, I'm pretty much n not down with that because I know I'd never do it. Um, but I do recognize that fashion is a great way to identify and look at history. So if I see a photo or a film that has poodle skirts, then I know it's from the 1950s. If I see a photo or a film that has a cropped football jersey, then I know it's likely from the 80s. Think Johnny Depp in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part One. <laughs> so in that respect, fashion is fascinating um, in a historical or you know analytical type respect and also the fact that it tends to cycle back through. Now I was born in 1979 so of course I didn't experience 1970s fashion myself so obviously I've missed a ton. So if you experienced it for yourself make sure you put in the comments any trends that I may have forgotten or just couldn't include and also if you experienced 1970s fashion tell us what your favorite items were that you wore or ones that you always wanted to wear but never did but also, I'm not letting you off the hook, make sure you put anything that you can't believe looking back that you wore. So go ahead and do that. And like always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe, all of that stuff. It really helps out. Make sure you comment. I love reading your guys' comments. Thanks and see you next time. Bye.